In this video, I'll be taking you through my ongoing thousand penny challenge journey. I'm currently at painting 332. I want to share my insights I have gained from this watercolor journey. So these are the paintings I have done so far, but I'm only counting the ones I'm properly documented on social media. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you can become a part of this thousand painting challenge journey with me. And uh, let's get started guys. Before we jump on to um, sharing my insights on my thousand painting challenge journey, I want to share my the first video I recorded on social media by holding my mobile uh, through my hand to record the process. It looked horrible, but it brings back a lot of memories. When I look back, uh, it also shows how far I've come. Through this experience of creating thousand paintings, here are the 10 things I learned so far. So the first thing is being patient with the watercolors. Before I started with the medium, I didn't realize that watercolor would be this hard. And then later I realized that it's a natural medium. So I built up my patience um, slowly by working with smaller paintings and I improved little by little. So if you're new to watercolors, being patient is really necessary and work with smaller painting and slowly work to larger paintings. When I started to paint with watercolors, I want everything to look the same as my reference and even the colors I want to match 100% perfectly. It made me frustrated several times just trying to do that. So then I watched a couple of master watercolorists. When they painted, they didn't care about their reference or being true to the colors. Regardless, they did have a really amazing painting, yet they embraced uh, the imperfections while they were working. So I started introducing and embraced imperfections in my work and the process of painting in watercolors got really fun. In my early stages of watercolors, there's one thing um, I got really difficult and struggled with is how to control the medium. The watercolors blitz everywhere and doesn't blend properly. So I started with the basic understanding of um, the fluidity nature of the medium how much color to pigment ratio I need to be used to get a desired result. So I started with the basic fundamental exercises just by doing washes. There are several uh, exercises of washes I do. Uh, some are flat washes, color washes and gradient washes, which help me tremendously to get adaptable to the medium. When you paint in watercolors, you can't correct your mistake. It's not like any other opaque medium like um, gouache, acrylic or oil. Uh, you can go and paint over it. So if you make a mistake, make that into an opportunity. Make a figure or something you see in your reference as an object or something you painted before in your earlier work. So this mindset shift also encouraged me to think of mistakes as an opportunity and think as an apple little incidents. Creating numerous painting also improved and sharpened my observation skill. So before I paint, I analyze um, the lighting and shadows, where the lighting is coming from and where the shadows are. Now I also look for the lighter values and the darker values in my reference. And um, by doing this, I also started um, noticing subtle color variations in my reference as well. This also improved my ability to observe and interrupt details as greatly improved. And it is also surprising that my drawing skills also improved by doing this numerous amount of painting. I didn't learn color theory or watch any tutorials on it either. I mix a color um, in my palette by looking at my reference and apply on a watercolor paper. So earlier work, uh, my colors looked vibrant and the values looked darker. As my observation skills improved, I experimented with the various color combinations in my palette by testing. This also helped me with the deeper understanding of emotional impact and harmony of colors that can create in a painting. So there's one tip I usually give to my students while I'm teaching watercolors, is to think everything in terms of warm or cool colors. When you see a cool color in your reference, a mix from cool side of your palette and if you see a warm color in your reference, it makes a warm side from your palette. And this also helps you to simplify color theory in its own terms. A lot of people mention that watercolor is an expressive medium. I have no clue what they were talking about. When I started my first painting in watercolor, I didn't think about anything about my work. I just painted and didn't want to express anything through my work. Later, when I exhibited my work at galleries and I went to art market, most artists paint with the intent to express something through their work. I started thinking how to express my watercolor work and watercolor is the one of the best medium to express freedom and spontaneity. So watercolor is not a rigid medium, it's really hard to control. So I always trust my guts or instinct to express myself freely and my painting got better every time when I did this. Whenever I mentioned um, uh, in a painting in my head and I'll be so confident and when I go and paint and it won't look 
anywhere close to the final paint. And through this journey, I have torn a lot of watercolor paper and I also do the exact same painting at the back of the watercolor paper because it was really hard for me to let go. So I started telling myself um, that if the painting didn't work today, maybe some other day. So at one point, each piece um, contributes to my growth as an artist, which didn't meet my initial expectations. But there is something um, that comes alive when you see the painting the next day without comparing your reference. This is a straightforward concept, being consistent with your media. Being consistent also has this compounding effect in any kind of skill development. Being consistent also helped me to do more paintings and it also helped me in confidence to paint every day. I refined my techniques and it also gained me um, a deeper understanding of watercolor. I did have a personal life and some days I don't feel like painting so I take breaks and it is okay to take breaks as well. I try to get in um, as fast as I can because it's like going to the gym because your muscle loses is muscle memory and you have to start from the beginning. During the pandemic, I started with the watercolors. I just did paint, uh, not thinking about anything else. Eventually, I realized that um, when I documented all this artwork, it feels like a personal visual diary for me. My art feels like a reflection of my emotions, experiences, and personal growth. Most of my watercolor is where I was in time, a location, and capturing a simple day-to-day -day life. Yet, uh, this helps me to try to uh, find my voice, style and fun of creating this thousand paintings by creating all these paintings um, in my painting journey and uh, there is also a lot of numerous opportunities have opened up for me i won't deny um, i feel really anxious sometimes to showcase my artwork at the art market i'd be questioning myself who would be interested in buying my painting so our when i put out myself out there i was surprised by the recognition i received from customers and I also got a lot of uh, several commissions from it as well. So, so anyone who have been painting for a while uh, with a collection of artworks at home, it kind of any medium or anything or any craft, I encourage you to put yourself out there. As an artist, we put in a lot of work at home and we also spend a lot of time in the studio. But once we get uh, our work out there and these small victories also help me to motivate to me to paint even more. Now I've shared all the insights and what I've learned from uh, doing this um, ongoing thousand painting journey. And this is where I started. I started with the grayscale and you can see I did some landscapes and a couple of um, characters and and here um, where I was really scared of colors. Um, uh, the thought of mixing color made me uneasy. But I kept going and this is my first plein air painting. I went outside and I tried to capture what's in front of me. And you can see that there is no depth or there is no value arrangements or the my colors look everything the same. And this is another planner I did. And I also did a couple of the studies outside my apartment. And you can see that my colors look vibrant and the values is not aligning properly. And I also did a couple of studies from photographs and did some blending studies. And as I said in the beginning of this video that being patient is really important. So when I look back at this, I don't know where my conference came from, but I kept going. And this is where you have to be uh, patient, you have to slowly build up. And I also did a couple of uh, studies of really a master watercolorist, and uh, this is a work from uh, Joseph Zubovic. And this also helped me to learn a uh, letting go, and I also learned uh, the brushwork as well as um, how to embrace imperfections. So these are the things I learned from uh, one of this artist and I also learned a couple other things from other artists as well. So it's kind of like I'm studying as well as learning the medium together. And you can see that I also paint at the back of the painting as well. Because in the beginning I was always thinking about um, how can I study this medium. And and this is also a planner I did um, um, uh, at I Park uh, near Toronto. And you can see that uh, this is nowhere close to my work what I have now and this is my uh, current work and you can see that uh, these are the paintings I've done uh, 2022 and 2023 and you can see that I spent a lot of time on the proportions as well as um, aligning the uh, values properly and you can see um, it it looks really loose and it looks super realistic and the more you do it the more you get confident with the medium and you can see this also painting I also showed you and I also got comfortable cityscape and then I started exploring a different subject as well. Thanks again for watching this thousand painting journey video with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below. 
before you go hit the subscribe button so you guys become a part of this thousand painting journey with me please just share with your friends and fellow artists and family and uh, good luck with your painting folks